Hello and welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm Steve Whitfield. I'm at the wonderful Woodsby Reservoir here in Barnsley when I'm catching skimmers and bream like these. Well, Woodsby Reservoir, what can I say? There's some great anglers cut the teeth on this venue. Anglers like Dennis White, for instance. Tommy Pickering. Alan Scothan. And it's a venue, what's gone through some changes over the years. A venue what were predominantly uh, skimmers, bream and hybrids has now been stocked with carp and it's, and it's a true mixed fishery. And we're here today doing a bit of short to medium range feeder fishing, catching some skimmers and some bream. I've actually hooked two carp but we didn't see them for very long but uh, yeah, what can I say? I used to walk around this venue as a kid on the evening matches and I'd see the likes of Dennis and all the, all the anglers, what you'd read about in the papers. And it really is a great venue. And, and today it's not letting us down. We've had several bream, half a dozen skimmers. I've hooked two carp, one with foul hooked and it's come off and another one's actually uh, broke me up length but it's turning into a great day and I'm really enjoying it and I've just had a change of bait there I've put a piece of corn on uh, my last fish were a small fish so I'm looking now to try and catch a bream so by changing my bait and putting that piece of corn on hopefully I'll get a better fish I'm not actually targeting carp but there's quite a lot in here now and they do make quite a lot of the weights up uh, in the matches and, and in recent years there's been 80 90 pounds of carp caught and, and only recently a few weeks ago there were a 40 pounder a silverfish on the pole now that just shows you what type of venue it is <laughs> The lines I've chosen to fish today at Woodsboro, I'm fishing 15 and 30 metres. Now that is quite short in general for feeder fishing, but with, with the development of uh, feeder only competitions over recent years and the need to exploit the shorter lines, whereas in years gone by, if you were fishing a match for instance where any rule counts, you might use your pole say for 13 metres or 14 metres and you'd use your feeder for a longer chuck but 
when, you, when you're limited to only using a feeder, you need to exploit all that water what's in front of you. And one way to do this is use the pole line. It's, it's a method now what's, what's become devastating, where, whereas in years gone by, it was always a long, a long chuck for the feeder. So today I'm fishing 15 and 30 metres. I'm gonna, I keep having a drop on, the, on, the, on this like 15 metre line, which is the short line. But I'm hoping as the day goes on, that line's gonna get better and better. So I'll carry on at 30 metres. I've been feeding dead maggots, a few live maggots, a bit of chopped worms and some pellets. I definitely think putting a little bit of chopped worm in has got me a bite quicker. I haven't actually put loads of chopped worm in. I'm feeding more dead maggots and, and, uh, and pellets to be fair. But I definitely think that little bit of attraction or having some chopped worm in the feeder is getting me a quicker bite. Another thing what's important, especially at places like Woodsbury where there's a chance of hooking a carp, the likelihood you're going to hook that carp in the first probably 30 seconds of the feeder hitting the water. It's only shallow there and the feeder settles quite quickly. And the two carp what I have actually hooked that have been on by now. So I'll keep holding my rod for the first maybe 20, 30 seconds. And once it's settled down, I can put it in the rest and carry on fishing more comfortably. Now, the setup I'm using today, I'm, I'm, set, I'm using a, an helicopter rig combined with a Paternoster. It's a rig what's become really popular now and it's really, it's, it's, really, it's, it's, it's a good tangle free, free rig. Another thing to mention, I'm using a 50 centimetre hook length. It's important when you're using hook lengths of 50 centimetres and less that you don't pick the rod up until you've actually got the fish on. And that's why I'm not particularly too bothered about holding my rod because the bites are quite short. I've got a short pattern oster. I'll show you the setup later and I'll explain a few things about the length of the pattern oster and the length of hook lens. But the day is going quite well. I've had several bream now and, 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 and maybe a dozen skimmers. So I'm building quite a good net up. The conditions aren't perfect. It's been like this for three weeks now. So they better get used to it. And that's the fish there. be a skimmer. I've had quite a few of these now and it's been difficult to pick the better fish out and I think sometimes as the saying goes keep putting a fish in the net Wolfbrook is absolutely full of these fish little skimmers like this but I believe they swim around with a bigger bream so I'll keep putting a few, few of these in the net The lines I've chosen to fish today, 15 and 30 metres, it's important to pick the right rod. And the rod I'm using today is a CR10, number one, 11 foot three piece from Cadence. And there's a bite. Now, this rod is lovely and soft. And, it's, and that's the important thing for fishing short lines. Short lines can be more important to pick the right rod because especially when you're fishing a pole line the bites can be quite vicious and when you're catching let's say skimmers and bream at that distance you do really want a rod what's going to absorb the bite and land you the fish. That's a lovely skimmer there. And the reason I really like this rod is for feeders, let's say up to 30, 30 grams, 
and fishing anywhere from 15 to 40 meters. The rod's absolutely superb. Making a 30 meter cast with a 20 gram feed is easy. The rod's got a lovely soft action. And I always say, you only see how good a rod is when you've got a fish on. And this rod's absolutely superb. And it's perfect for the, for catching these stamp fish, what we're catching today, skimmers and bream. And this size fish does really show off this, this rod's action. This is a small skimmer, but you can see with the rod, it's absorbing all the small lunges it makes. And it handles fish like this perfectly. So we're going to look at the rig I'm using today. This is, for all intents and purposes, is Pat and Oster. But it, I, I think it's a modern day Pat and Oster because what you've got there is you've got the, the action of the Pat and Oster, but you've also got this, this quick connect swivel integrated into the rig. This does two things. I can change my up length really quick if I want to, just by pulling back the rubber sleeve and then picking another hook up, hooking back on there, and just make sure you pull the sleeve back over. That sits in between, I can, I'll split the rig so you can see it. Basically what I've got there is a three inch pattern oster from the first knot to the swivel. Now, the rubbers themselves, the first one sits onto the knot there I just took that in nicely. And the other one just basically stops the up length sliding up the, up the main line. It's quite a safe rig really as well because if you were to break the line, that up length could come off. And the only thing what will be tethered to the, uh, to the fish is an hook rather than dragging the feed around. So it is quite a safe rig. Another important part of the rig is the length of the pattern oster. Now, I'm fishing at 30, 30 metres, and what I try and do is set this up at, at three inches. And if I were fishing 40 metres, I'd have fished a four, a, a four inch pattern oster as well. Right up to if I'm fishing with a 13 foot rod, for example, where I'm fishing in excess of 60 metres, I would use a six inch pattern oster. That doesn't say you can't use a shorter pattern oster for the for for longer chuck, but as a rule of thumb, that's where I start. The other thing is, at shorter distances, you don't need such a long up length. The up length I've got today is 50 centimetres. You can see, see from how the rig works there, it's quite positive for the distance I'm fishing. And let's say you were fishing at 50 or 60 metres, you would definitely need more movement than that to indicate your bites. The feeders we're using today, as you can see, I've got a selection of weight forward feeders. I've got some of these Guru feeders with the really big, big cage. I've got a, a tiny feeder there, medium size, and this. To feed the swim today, I've started with this feeding feeder. Now this in itself can fit quite a lot of ground bait in it. You can see there's no weight on it, but when it's loaded with ground bait, it does weigh 30 or 40 grams. 
But with this rod today, I've managed to chuck that without any problems. This saves a lot of time in feeding the peg. I can put four of these in at the start, as opposed to maybe 10 or 12 of these. This saves time, especially in, a match, con in, in match conditions, where time is off the essence. If I feel I'm getting bites really quickly, I'll switch to one of these feeders. And the reason I use one of these feeders is they empty quite quickly. And if I get a bite, let's say in the first 10 or 15 seconds of the cast, I'm well assured that the bait's gonna stay in my peg. Whereas with the cage feeder, and the holes are quite a lot smaller, the tendency is the fish could swim around emptying that ground bait all around. And this is what you don't want when you feed a fishing. You want to keep your fish as tight in an area as you can. Now fill in the feeder. There's two ways you can do this. My preferred way is to make a small pile of maggots, what I've been feeding today, a few pellets and a little bit of chopped worm. Now the best way to do this is by feeding that into the feeder with your finger and then sandwiching it with the ground bait. That's a great way and a nice neat and you don't actually get too much spillage into your ground bait. Now, alternatively, and this is an advantage, this is advantageous when you're fishing at speed, where you'd put quite a lot of bait in there and just mix it up, yeah? It's, 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 a far, it's far harder to regulate the feed, but that you can go straight in. And that, if you're fishing and it's, and it's really quick, the fishing's fast, that's the quickest way of loading the feeder. The four method for me is far better because you can regulate the feed. However, as I said, if it's really about speed, just mix a, a corner of your ground bait up with maggots, casters, whatever you're feeding, and just take a nip of that, and that'll save you three or four seconds each time. The ground bait I'm using today is XP from Bagham's. It's a pure crust expander. It makes a really good skimmer mix. As you can see, it's nice and light and fluffy, and it's really fine too. I always find a finer mix is perfect for skimmers and bream. And I really do think they'll graze on this for a long time, gill feeding, and they'll keep them in your peg longer till they find your duck bait. It's a lovely mix, nice and soft, and it makes a lovely cloud bringing them fish to your feeder. Right, the up baits we've got today for fishing here at Wusborough, I've got quite an array of baits. I've got live maggots, pinkies, fluoro pinkies, sweet corn, dead maggots, pellets and casters. I've also done a little bit of chopped worm as well because I think introducing a little bit of this has got me some quick bites. Now, another bait which is brilliant for skimmers and bream, is these. Now these are red worms, and I wouldn't go anywhere without the, anywhere bream fishing or skimmers without any of these. Bream and skimmers love these. Now you notice I've got some sweet corn and pellets. The bream, what reside in Wusborough, really do like a pellet as well. And that's because they get fed a lot from the carp anglers. And as with the fish meal ground bait, the skimmers are really turned on to it. I've also got the, uh, the corn as an alternative, alternative up bait. If I feel there's a carp in my peg, because sometimes it can go quite quiet. And a couple of times now, it's done that. And I've actually hooked a carp. A piece of corn up like that is perfect. Now the bait what's been most successful today has been dead maggots. You can do dead maggots quite easily and the way I do them isn't any trouble. And what I do, the night before, I put them in a sealed container and I just cover them with about an inch and a half of water and put them in the fridge. And when you come to them the day after, they're like this. Dead maggots what have been in the freezer 
don't appeal to me and I don't really think they appeal to the fish. So by having nice fresh hook bait like that, I'm sure it puts you more fish in the, in the net. Let's cast out and see if we can catch one for you. I'll see you there. I'm actually clipped up. It's important to have a line clip to maintain your distance. Now, that's my 30 meter line. And I'm also fishing, I'd suggest like a 15 meter line. That one's quite easy because I can see on the line where the white water finishes where I'm sat is the line I'm fishing. So when I'm swapping lines and going on that shorter line, it's just a case of making that short chuck into that area. Also, there's less risk of hooking a big fish and getting snapped off because I've still got that. But out there at 30 meters, I've hooked two carp today. One of them were definitely fouled up and it's come off. And the other one, I've lost my hook, which is, which is poor on my part. But I'd be certain at this range, even if hooking a carp at, 50, at 30 metres, that I'd have enough stretching the line or enough time to remove my clip and land the fish. Casting a feeder. Now it's quite obvious to achieve a distance of let's say 30 metres we've got to do a conventional overhead cast but to exploit that 15 metre line it's far easier to do this an underarm cast. Far easier than throwing the feeder high up in the air and making a big splash in your swim. skimmer from Musby Reservoir. Well we've just had his first fish on the short line. I've periodically kept feeding that line throughout the day and in match conditions it can be a real killer in the last hour and that's where I'm going to concentrate all my efforts now.
Well, that's another fish on the short line. Just goes to show how effective it is. And you can see from the action of the rod, it's absorbing all the pulls from this better fish. cracking fish to end the session on. Thanks for watching. So there we are, a cracking net of fish fishing the short feed lines from Woodburn Reservoir. Let's get them back. Fantastic.